Hello everyone and welcome to this week's After Effects quick tip video. Today I'm going to be talking about the differences between scripting and expressions. Over time these two different fields have slowly kind of morphed into a very similar uh, way of programming or adding automation and functionality to After Effects. Uh, today I just want to go over quickly some of the basics of how they differ and how they are also very very similar. I also recently just created a video called Scripting for Expression Pros, which I thought that it would be cool to kind of make something more towards the uh, expressions community because I know there is a huge section of After Effects that focuses on expressions and there are actually a ton of overlap, especially if you want to learn scripting if you already know a lot about expressions. So bouncing off of this video, I want to be going over the similarities and differences between the two and a little bit about the history and how they've slowly morphed into one. Before we get started, I do want to remind you down below, hit subscribe and the bell icon to be notified of new videos coming out twice weekly in the channel and down in the description you can follow us on GitHub for coding updates as well as Instagram for other live updates. If you're not already a member in our Discord server, make sure you come and join to get up with scripting, extensions, plugins, submit tutorial ideas, hang out with awesome members, and much more. And if you'd like to help support us on YouTube, you can do so in the link down below by becoming a member or supporter, which comes with cool perks like loyalty badges, Discord status, and much more. And also down below, check out the links to AE Scripts, Gumroad, and Adobe Exchange to see some other cool stuff I make. Alright, so expressions and scripting. What are the differences and what are the similarities? Well, right off the bat, there are a ton of similarities, especially at this point. Um, if you are a scripting person from the old days, you know that expressions have gone from a legacy extend script. Actually, I don't even remember what the original engine was called, but now it's called legacy extend script. And now we have the JavaScript expressions engine. This is because as time has gone on, it's become much easier to write uh, expressions in the same kind of formatting as any JavaScript script. This allows you a lot more control over things like variables and a syntax which easily translates between scripting and expressions. And I do apologize ahead of time. If I ever say scripting and extensions instead of expressions, it's because I've said scripting and extensions probably a billion times uh, up to this point. But really today, I just want to talk about the newest JavaScript expressions. These aren't even that new at this point in 2022, but because it uses this new JavaScript engine, the difference between the two, uh, scripting and expressions, has become less and less, which if you want to make the jump, it's becoming super easy. Now, of course, at its base, all of the stuff you're going to see in the two guides um, are mostly going to be different because they're going to have different change logs. The things that they've added for expressions usually doesn't one to one correlate with the things they've added to scripting unless it's a brand new big feature um, like uh, kind of like the Mogurt image ability. And then all of the properties and attributes and kind of built in functions kind of match to one-to-one, -one, but not quite. So for example, if we look at the comp item, which is basically a composition in After Effects, and we look at the comp item inside of uh, the expression guide, you're gonna see that a lot of it does kind of overlap, um, but the way we refer to things is slightly different. If we wanna get the active composition, um, you basically say active item. If you wanna get the active composition in an expression however you say this comp because whatever the layer or property you've applied it to is always going to be inside of a composition so the the methods and attributes actually are very similar but the way you get them is not always the same obviously with things like um, name and index these are all going to be the same um, whether you're referring to layers or compositions and things like that but again, the way you actually refer to them can often be different. If you're writing a script, you don't say, grab the composition named X, for example. Um, but with an expression, you can easily grab things by name. Of course, this is possible with some things like layers, but as you can see, there are a lot of things that overlap, but not quite. It's kind of like um, two languages that are very similar in terms of like actual spoken languages. Um, obviously things like width and height, duration, these are all things that also exist in both of them and actually use pretty much the same exact syntax by saying, oh, I want the dot duration 
or oh, I want the dot height of my composition. These are the things that translate one to one, and I can say, oh, well, I have this knowledge that I can get um, the height of my layer, or using a, for example, source rect at time. That is a very common method to get the width and height and left and uh, top bounds of an object, but you can also actually translate this directly to a script and it will work uh, just the same as an expression. So if you are making the transition from expressions to scripts or vice versa, uh, know that there is a ton of overlap and most of the time you'll be able to kind of guess uh, which methods and attributes you have access to and can mess around with. One cool thing about expressions, at least uh, that isn't really that usable in scripting is this expressions language menu. This is what gives you access to all of the different categories of code for expressions you can have, whether it's global stuff, vector math, a bunch of pre uh, programmed math stuff, um, or if it's accessing the actual parts of After Effects, like the composition, a uh, piece of footage, a layer, a camera, a property, a keyframe, all that kind of stuff. Having access to them right here is super nice. Of course, you have these guides you can go through, but like just to be able to in After Effects have access to this is something that scripting has never really had. Uh, maybe that's an idea for you out there. But with all of these built in properties, we can easily key in on what kind of thing we want to code. And on top of that, a lot of this stuff actually does apply um, in JavaScript uh, scripting as well. For example, you have the ability to do randomization in JavaScript. Um, the JavaScript math library is all integrated in ECMAScript 3, which is the standard which scripts use. So like math.squareRoot, math.cosine, math.floor, all of these are available as well in scripting. So if you know a lot of the stuff in here, you already know scripting. You already know you can get the layer by the index or the layer by the name or the layers width or height. Um, all of this stuff really is super easy to translate between the two, especially now that we're on the same engine using JavaScript. If you somehow are still using legacy extend script, upgrade now. Um, I don't even remember what year the new JavaScript engine came out, but but the, the new JavaScript engine has been around for so long, at this point, you really should be upgrading. And if you do think that the upgrade is going to be difficult, you really can almost look at these two guides side by side and say, oh, this ease out function. Well, if I search the same thing in here, we're actually going to find some ease out methods and properties and stuff that we can have access to. So really, if you want to learn all this on your own, you can find something that you know in expressions say the frame duration and just copy and paste that into the other guide and find out how to access that in there. And through this process, you will learn that basically all of the properties and stuff are the same. The only thing that will differ is how you kind of get the, the, the item in the first place. And of course, one of the cool things about new uh, expressions is the ability to use more like variable type things. So we can have a variable and then manipulate that variable later in the same way we would a script. And you can even use a script to read an expression and interpret those variables and a whole bunch of other complicated things. But I don't want to ramble on too long. The basic thing is that scripting and expressions are so closely related now because they've grown together through all these years of Adobe developing them to the point where they use the same JavaScript engine and to the point where anyone wanting to make the leap from expressions to scripting or scripting to expressions can quite easily translate all of their existing knowledge, um, whether it's accessing the composition, the layers, the properties, or just getting all of the things uh, translated between the two languages. It's mostly the same. If you guys enjoyed the video, hit the thumbs up button down below, hit subscribe and the bell icon to be notified of new videos coming out twice weekly on the channel. And down in the description, you can follow us on GitHub for coding updates, as well as Instagram for other live updates. If you're not already a member of our Discord server, make sure you come and join to get up with scripting, extensions, plugins, expressions, of course, and submit tutorial ideas and much more. And if you'd like to help support us on YouTube, you can do so down below by becoming a member or supporter. That comes with cool perks as well. And there's also links down below to AE Scripts, Gumroad, and Adobe Exchange to see some other cool stuff I make. Thanks again for watching, everyone. We'll see you next time.